Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. So today I'm going to be looking at this Xbox One S which has been sent in. And I've been working away quietly and I've come across this one in a batch of about 80 which has been sent in by a new customer. And this one's got a rather peculiar problem. So the description on this disk drive, on a well on a piece of sellotape on the disk drive, says it's not turning on. But I hooked up the power supply, so the power, it came with the power supply, this one here. So I hooked up a power supply and I attempted to turn it on. And as you can see, we get no life whatsoever. And if I plug in my bench supply, so I've got a custom lead here, which goes up to my bench supply, provides it with 12 volts. And I'm drawing 4.22 amps. Now 4.22 .20, amps is very, very, very peculiar. And I'm going to unplug this before it ends up catching fire. And I just want to show you something really quick. So, let's pop into the microscope. And if we take a look just around here, you'll see that we've got the connector for the disk drive. And we've also got the connector for the hard drive as well. So we've got hard drive power, we've got disk drive power. And one thing I noticed was when I hook up my bench power supply, which is obviously not going to be limited to the normal circuit protection that the Xbox One power supply has we will notice that this is going to get very very hot very very quickly and it's an area which I've never noticed before so I thought I'd, I thought I'd start recording on this because like I said it's very peculiar uh, I've never noticed this kind of issue before or at least not in this particular area so I'm going to hook up my bench power supply now and now what I'm going to do, I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of put my hand there and I kind of jumped. <laughs> and the reason for that is because it gets very, very hot, very, very quick. So let's just drop some IPA. And you see that there? Yeah. So we have an issue with one of the MOSFETs that's powering either the disk drive circuit or the actual hard drive circuit I'm not sure which one it is but uh, it's an issue which I've never come across before or at least not on the Xbox One S so I'm going to try and fix this and see what we can do about getting it working so like I said the issue that we're facing is that this MOSFET here is getting very very hot so that's telling me that's shorted to ground like I said I've never actually come across that issue before on this particular motherboard but what I'm going to do is I'm disconnecting the disk drive and I'm going to try it again now and disconnecting the disk drive we get 0 0.7 amps drawn but not 4 and then it drops down to 0 0.01 amps, which is normal standby. So let's try and turn it on now. Yeah. Is it going to stay on? It appears so. Drawing 1.37 amps steady, which is normal at 12 volts and um, we're not going to get any display because we've got no hard drive hooked up so let's hook a hard drive up to this and let's see what happens let's see if we get a display So let's plug in a HDMI cable then. And I'm going to switch over to my capture card. And 
And yeah, we get a display. So we have an issue somewhere with the disk drive. So let's investigate. So let's first of all just plug in the disk drive again and let's see if it replicates the issue. And it does, we do get 4.22 amps current draw. And that is very, very hot. Disconnect the disk drive. Works fine. Okay. So normal current draw when we disconnect the disk drive. So there's clearly an issue with the disk drive, but the question is, is the issue with the circuit or is it with the disk drive? So let's find out. And the issue is with the disk drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to investigate and see if I can figure out why the disk drive is causing it to short out the board. Hopefully it hasn't caused too much damage to the circuit. We'll find that out a bit later on. So the motherboard can go to one side for now. And I'm going to take the disk drive apart. And we're going to figure out what's going on. And hopefully we can fix this. Okay, right. So what I want to do then is I want to figure out first of all, is this a door to board problem or is this a disk drive problem? So I'm going to pop the disk drive to one side and I'm going to bring back the Xbox itself. So what I want to do, first of all, is I want to figure out if the disk drive itself is faulty or if it's just the door to board that's faulty and the problem is if it is the door to board then it stands a good chance that the chip that's tied to the board might be faulty as well so it might not be fixable uh, but that's just one of them things that unfortunately sometimes we can't do anything about we can do a door to board swap but like I said if the chip itself is bad then we've got a problem So let's just plug in the SATA cable and there we go. And we get nothing. So that's interesting. So, because this is hooked up to the power supply, it's going to have the circuit protection in it. It's not going to allow it to turn on. So, it's not the disk drive itself, it's the daughter board. So, what I want to do is I want to find out exactly what area of the daughter board. Ow! Oh, that hurt. And, yep, I can see it. Here we go. Right, okay. So, yeah, I burnt myself straight away. So it's the motor controller, by the look of it, which is good news. And I actually didn't notice this to start with. And you see, as soon as I unplugged that, it turned on, or it tried to turn on. Just look there. So let's fix this daughter board. Let's do a daughter board repair, something different for a change, eh? So we can clearly see some damage here around these capacitors, so let's get those off straight away. They've got to go. And yep, we can clearly see damage there. Uh, let's get rid of these ones as well. There we go. So the IC that we see in here, this long IC here, is the disk drive motor controller. And this is what basically 
controls the motors on the disk drive itself and allows the disk drive to spin and that was drawing some incredible current so I'm not sure if this motor controller itself is bad but what I do know is that the capacitors certainly wasn't good so what I'm going to do now I've removed those capacitors the ones that do look bad I'm going to try this again oops there we go normal current draw 1.4 amps absolutely normal current draw okay good move this out of the way for a minute I'm gonna get this door to board repaired so of course the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is just clean up this area so the reason I got rid of all of those capacitors there was purely because they all looked damaged or they looked burnt so by getting rid of all of them it makes it makes for a better chance of a successful repair so I'll just add some flux there and I'm gonna get the capacitors replaced but first of all I need to just clean up the area and prep it for some new caps I'm not 100% sure on the values of the caps so I'll take some off a donor board and put them onto here I'm just going to replace the solder that's on here with some leaded solder you can clearly see some damage here clearly see that it took some of the solder mask away So I'm going to be replacing four capacitors and it actually didn't take the solder mask away that's fine that was just a little bit burnt alright so like I said, I'm going to grab the components I need off a donor board and just drop them onto this board. So I'm just going to get them desoldered and then I'll get them replaced. So components are in place. Yes, they look incredibly rough. But we're gonna we're gonna perform a little bit of a magic trick now. We're gonna add some flux. So this is the magic source, and then we're just gonna flow. We're gonna go with the flow. Go with the flow. There we go. Perfect absolutely perfect and there we go circuit restored and we should be good to go alright so I'm going to get rid of that donor board there that was my board that I've just took out my pile and I'm going to take the disk drive back now let's get this all lined up just pop in the ribbon there and just get the wires resoldered for the disk drive daughter board or for the motor rather Okay, I'm going to add a tad of flux just to flow these in properly. We don't want them ending up with bad joints. Just 
clean up the IPA. I'm ready to go. So let's get the console itself back now then. And whoops, let's pop the case back over it just so it sits in there properly. And we're ready for testing. So, the way that we're going to test this to make sure we've done our job is we're going to try and install an operating system. Because if the daughter board isn't working for whatever reason, then it's not going to allow us to install OSU 1. So, we'll get that installed and hopefully it does the job. Interesting. Do we also have an issue with the disk drive or did that go into protection mode? That's the question. So let's reset it. Ready to go. Turned back off again. Right, so do we also have an issue with the power supply? That's possible. Now, these consoles, the customer doesn't care what parts are faulty as long as the boards and daughter boards are working. So, if it's got an issue with the power supply, then fine. Uh, I'll just get it tested. So, that area is no longer getting hot. And it appears that the power supply might be bad as well. So, that could have been what caused it. Switch over. And there we go, so that's working fine, or it appears to be working fine. Let's try and insert a disc. It takes a disc, nice and smooth. That's a good sign. So there's also an issue with this power supply. But I don't mess with power supplies. Uh, for any long term viewers, you'll know that I don't touch power supplies because they're dangerous. Uh, it's not something I would recommend anyone mess with, they're cheap enough to replace. Uh, I do understand some people can't afford to replace them and they need to repair them, but for me, it's not going to be one of them things that I repair. But uh, never mind. Right, so I'm going to get the OSU 1 downloaded and I'll resume the video when I've got it onto a USB and ready to test the actual operating system. Right, okay, so the USB is prepared and ready to go. So I'm going to plug that into the front port. Just like that. And then I'm going to take a controller. Let's sync that up. There we go. And let's see if that allows me to install it. Let's cross our fingers, let's hope it didn't damage the disk drive itself, or the daughter board itself. Right, okay, so this is not updating. Um, it's been stuck on 14% downloading for quite a while now, so I'm going to disconnect the USB. And it could be a bad USB, so I've got myself a... SSD, an external SSD, which I'm going to try and install it from. Okay, that's accepted there. Let's see if it gets past 14% now, shall we? 
I've had that USB for a while, it could be bad. And it's going a lot quicker now. Okay, we're now on step three. So we're looking for this now to get past 72%. If it gets past 72%, it means that it's performed the disk drive check and that it's accepted the disk drive as working. So fingers crossed. It doesn't necessarily mean that the disk drive itself is working, but it means that the Microsoft ARM chip that I pointed out earlier on is working. So hopefully that's gonna work and hopefully it's gonna accept the update because otherwise it's a null fix. And there we go so that's accepted the update and the console appears to be working uh, let's just cancel that I don't want to be formatting that and let's skip the signing and let's load in a disk make sure that that works it does accept the disk Um, for some reason it doesn't appear to be showing up but that could be because we're not signed in I'm not 100% sure there we go it is installing a disk so the reason that it's not actually showing up what the disk is is purely because we're not connected to the internet and uh, now it's showing up okay uh, so we're not connected to the internet, so it's not going to show what disk it is because it needs to connect to the internet to download the disk information sometimes on certain disks. But if we connect to the internet now, we might have trouble connecting to the internet because my router does not like Xboxes for some reason. Okay. And um, that's looks like he's going to connect I'm not sure I do have a lot of trouble connect yeah it, it doesn't connect properly it's uh, it's something to do with the router I'm not going to bother I'm not going to bother worrying about that uh, but that's installing the game absolutely fine let's just eject it and as you can see that comes out nicely so it's installing the game fine, uh, the disk drive is working, it's accepting the update which means that the disk drive is going to be just fine. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the fact that it's not connecting to the internet purely because that is something to do with my router, it happens on all of the Xbox One S's. But it does pick up the Wi-Fi name so I'm, like I said I'm not going to worry. This console is now fixed and ready to go. So let's just summarise on this then, so this came in originally for no power. And by just feeding around and doing a little bit of observations I've determined that the MOSFET here was getting very very hot and it was also drawing an excessively high current when the console wasn't turned on and I determined that by using my custom breakout lead from the bench power supply so by taking a look at the disk drive itself I determined that the capacitors were burnt out and that was what was causing the disk drive to draw too much power because one of those capacitors was burnt out and shorting itself out to ground it effectively became a wire so it came from the circuit and went straight through to ground but by replacing that cap and another couple of caps around it just for the sake of it because they looked a little bit burnt I've managed to restore the disk drive and get everything working again but that's going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching if you do have any comments or questions leave them down in the comment section down below I will always do my best to answer and if you want to see more repair videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. I do also have channel members and for as little as £1.99 a month you can support what I do here and keep the channel growing and going. So that's going to be for this video, thank you very much for watching, until next time, see you later, bye for now.